I'm Lisa. I'm Continental Drift Knits and uh, this is a journal, log, uh, podcast of my knitting crafting journey and uh, this is the first time I've done anything like this. Editing Lisa is going to curse me because she's never done anything like this and uh, I just wanted to blog and t connect with community and uh, yeah see how it goes so welcome okay so what we're going to do is probably go with the normal format um what i finished uh what i'm working on and uh what what i might have bought recently um but also i think there's a few other things i'd like to do so i want to look at some old stuff um uh, pull out some old uh, whips or old, uh, I think my oldest whip is 26 years old. Uh, might have frogged that one, but I, I think it's 26 years old. It was a baby, um, it was a baby cardigan for my son who's now 26. So, uh, but it's in acrylic and I'm, I've sort of gone away from acrylic mostly. So I'm not sure that I'll ever finish it. So I sort of hold on to it for nostalgia purposes. Um, so that sort of thing, what I'm reading, uh, what I'm watching podcast wise, uh, what techniques I've learnt, uh, where I've been and uh, probably something a little bit unique about me is I'm an Australian obviously in the UK and uh, we've lived here for the last seven and a half years but we will be moving over the next six to 12, six months hopefully um, to New Zealand so that's going to be a really interesting adventure uh, and I'd like to I'd like to explore the different places that I am in terms of knitting and crafting and yarn and that sort of thing so I hope you'll enjoy it um, and I'd like to log that for my own future reference as well, if nobody watches. So anyway, on with the uh, on with the knits. So recently, I went to Iceland. Absolutely amazing place. And of course, I bought Plotilope. So Istex is the brand. And I bought um, some Plotilope. I'm, I'm in an absolute mess here. Um, I bought some Plotilope and I thought, well, I wondered how I would go wearing it because it's quite rustic and uh, and I love it. I love it. I can wear it next to skin and it doesn't bother me. Um, and it's so warm. I've just been back in Australia for two weeks and I took this with me and it was amazing. So I, um, I, I did a uh, pattern by Isabel Kramer and uh, I modified it slightly from memory and uh, I will put all of the because I can't remember and I haven't got my script with me because I decided I was so nervous I would just start um, I will put all of the uh, yarn details and the pattern details at the bottom of this YouTube video um, but I do have a Ravelry page as well. So in Ravelry, I'm LJC Oz. Just my initials with OZ in front of it. Um, I should try and change it to Continental Drift Knits. So I'll try and do that. Um, and I'm using, uh, by the way, I'm using AirPods because it seems to work for Andrea Maori. So I'm, I'm just running with it. Um, so what we're going to do, what I did is, is, knit this uh, and I was quite obsessed with knitting it I actually obsessively knitted on this from start to finish but what I love the most about it was the sleeve construction oh my gosh so it's done all in one I think it's a contiguous method so basically uh, you cast on here you increase to create the body stitches and then you increase on this side to create the sleeve stitches and it ends up with a saddle shoulder construction. So I hope um, I'm looking at the screen. I realize I'm doing that. Um, that's just gonna take me a little while to 
to it. So you can see the saddle, saddle shoulder, stunning. I would do another saddle shoulder. The only thing I do find with this, um, there are short rows, so it sits higher at the back. Um, the only thing I do find is I do find it, it rides up just slightly, just creates the slightest funnel neck. So I'm not 100% sure why it does that. And um, so for, from a construction technique, I would like to redo, I would like to have another go at this pattern. I, I was amazing. Um, I think it's a forager, forager, oh, I can't remember. I'll, um, I'll see if editing Lisa can insert that at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so it, yeah, it sits slightly high, just, just funnels up a little bit, which actually I sort of don't mind, but I think I would like to understand why it does that so I can, so I can, um, knit one completely flat, but it's absolutely lovely. Um, it's blowing out a little bit. It's a little bit browner. It's. Yeah, it's it's blowing out a little bit. Probably this this bit back here that you can see is more what I see. Yeah. Anyway, that's some. Um, I think it's forager. I'm not, I might be saying that wrong. So love doing that. So I finished that about a month ago, um, and I said don't have a lot on the needles at the moment. But the other thing I finished, I finished a pair of socks for my grandson. Um, but they've been left in Australia. Uh, I have finished one half of a DRK everyday sock in, for a little person. And I haven't knitted socks for about five years. I was a bit of an obsessive sock maker. Um, and I just stopped. I stopped making socks. And I think that's partly because I wear through socks really quickly. Um, and so I didn't, I couldn't get a sock pattern that I didn't wear through quickly. Um, so I started experimenting with socks again about three, two or three months ago. And um, so this is an interesting, this is uh, Toa. It is in Gage Dye Works and I just love this yarn. It's a rainbow yarn and basically they'll be fraternal socks. So they won't be two the same. Um, really enjoying having a play with those. Uh, but this is the second time I've knit this. First time was on two millimeter. This is on 2.25 millimeter needles. Uh, it's a lot better fabric. I think the, the child that will wear these will enjoy them a little bit better than, uh, than the bulletproof fabric of two millimeters. Um, there was another sock here. Can't find them, doesn't matter. Um, and they were for me, and I did them using, I made a really long sock tube and then I cut them and I did an afterthought heel. But afterthought heel, heels just don't seem to fit me. Uh, and I think it's because my, this, this circumference around here um, is, is big. And so when I put an afterthought heel in, it just goes tight across the stirrup, across the top of my ankle there. I'm not sure what the bit's called. But um, I've added rows. I've added 10 rows before I start the heel shaping. And that makes a deeper cup of a heel, which is great, but it doesn't seem to lengthen. For me, it's still tight across the, across the top of my foot. Um, across this thing oh, this bit here so uh, if anyone's got any ideas there that'd be great okay so I'm not going to talk too much I've got lots to choose from and I and I'll just do over the I'm hoping to I'm hoping to uh, podcast about once every once a fortnight I won't always have whips. I won't. Or I won't. I'll always have whips, but I won't always have new whips, and I won't always have finished objects. But I think I've got lots in the back catalogue, so I'll just pull stuff out. Oh, this was the other thing I finished. So yesterday, I blocked this top, and this is the Pearl Soho notched hem tank top in creme. 
yarn from Tribe Yarns. Hang on. You got this. Um, so I've got a hole. Crim K. Reborn Jeans, it's called. And it is 100 gram skein. Um, what are the deets? Where are the deets? Doesn't have them on there. Oh, yeah, 100 grams, 300 meters. So it's about a DK weight, sport DK weight. Um, it's still quite thick. I, I, I find knits in summer a little bit uh, problematic. Um, I think I'd have to go finer than this. Uh, this will be all right for an evening out. So it's a really simple hem tank, a, a high neck. I quite like a high neck. Uh, it did just say to cast on and cast off for the edges, but they all rolled, so it drove me mad. So I, I pulled that out and I did an applied I-cord edge, which I quite liked. The thing I don't like about these, and I'm going to try. Now, I had, a, I had a tripod and I can't find it, so it's crunched up a bit. So it's, it's called the Notched Hem Tank because of this. Yeah, I'm not thrilled with it. It basically enhances, it sticks, I don't know, my hips. It doesn't look too bad there, actually. But what I don't like about it is the start to curl in here. So I blocked it out. It looks way better since I blocked it out, but it is starting to curl again. And these, these bits are eventually going to curl in like this and look like a nappy. So I'm not sure that's perfect for me, but I really like the um, I really like the fit and the shape. I, I went a little bit narrower at the back um, because I wanted a little bit more of a cutaway here. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. Oh, I've, and I guess what? Moving my chair back, I found the socks with the afterthought heel. So this yarn. I have had for 10 years and it got eaten by moths. So I rescued the yarn that was uh, that was left. Now these were done on two millimeter needle and they were done using Yarn Harlot's Patreon um, method. So basically I subscribed to uh, Stephanie Pearl McPhee's um, uh, Patreon channel and she went through a sock fitting exercise. And so basically I worked out my circumference, I worked out the stitch count, I worked out uh, everything. And I, yeah, they were done on two millimeter needles and they're beautiful, but they're just too tight across here. So here, that's where it's too tight. Editing Lisa here, go to Yarn Harlot Patreon page, She's just addressed afterthought heels and the exact issue I've been having. Um, I was sort of wondering whether I could create almost like a little gusset. But that would require me to know. So this, this I knitted in just a massive tube. So there were two. And they were just a big long tube. And basically I cut them and put um, heels and uh, toes and cuffs in. So having to do a gusset here would require me to know where my heel was. And I don't always, if I want to do some, I wanted to be able to do tube knitting. I want to do tube knitting in cinema, on the tube, in the car, when I don't want to think. Um, and it's just a bit of a problem trying to get a heel that fits. So this heel I did 10 rows before I did 10 rows before I started the decreases and I'm really happy with the heel it's not overly deep on me um it's just that it's just that one space it's this one one circumference so whether there's something I could do in the afterthought heel to to add more bulk here rather than back here because I don't need the bulk I don't need any more bulk than back here so we'll see 
don't know. You know, it's yet another another thing to contemplate. And the reason that I, I'm, I'm going to jump into a couple of acquisitions just because it's relevant. The reason that I want to find out how to do that really well is I have these. So my sister came to Australia from Canada and I used the opportunity to get some yarn. And basically I got uh, some deconstructed fade sets by Shirley Bryan Yarns and they're stunning. Oh my God. But I wanna just knit these as a big long tube. Um, I don't have a sock machine. I'd love an Earl Barker like the grocery girls, but it, it is what it is. So um, uh, that, that one was, doesn't actually have the doesn't have that colorway on it but anyway that's okay I'll put the colorways that I got down how cool was that my sister got me so I ordered two and then my sister got me another two to knit her and her daughter some socks <laughs> I love that go on Jen so they're really cool. So I can't wait to see how they all knit up. Um, but that's my purpose behind wanting a really good tube sock with a really good afterthought heel. So if you have some ideas for an afterthought heel, uh, I'd really like to know. So, Oh, and the other the other tip. Um, so Rebecca from the Crayer Bear podcast, I noticed her sock had, I, I know it's a very common thing to do, but I've never done it. Um, I noticed that her sock had uh, bulb pins every 10 rows. And I said, why have you done that? And she said, well, just so I can make the second sock the same. Um, makes so much sense. So I love, that's why I love podcasts. I find out stuff every time. Uh, finished objects, we were still doing that. I don't have any other recent finished objects but i do have two two one two three finished objects i want to show you uh that i have completed in the last well it's the last couple of years but uh two of them are my current summer knits that i wear all the time and um if i can if if editing lisa can do it uh she'll put in a cutaway but i doubt it I'm, I'm going to pretty much run this podcast as a straight run through. Um, I'm not very good at editing and it's a skill I'm happy to learn, but I, I fear that it would take me so long to edit it. I would be up to the next, uh, I would be up to the next episode before, before I got it out, before I got the first one out. So the first whip that I wear all the time and I throw on all the time is my love note. Um, it's in spun right round. Uh, Dr. Amp is the colourway. And I wear this all the time. All the time. So I really, really, really love this. It suits me too. I think the colour suits me. And I'm a greens and browns and dark person normally. So actually the blues is quite, quite lovely. So that's my love note and I wear that all the time and it's about, it's probably just a little bit up above uh, bracelet length and it's held with a blue mohair and I don't know what it was, which is not very useful. I recognise that. The, the other thing I love, which I wear a lot at this time of the year, is my Elton cardigan. And my Elton cardigan is a little bit unusual because the pattern is... The pattern is uh, in mohair and fingering weight. And I've done one in mohair and fingering weight, which I gifted to my mum. Um, but this one is in silk. Uh, no, not silk. Sorry, made the mistake. It's in travel knitter lace weight. Oh my, is that silk? The lace weight. I'll check. Uh, but it's also done in linen. So the dark is a linen from Wild and Woolly. Um, it's a Kalinka linen. And it's got so soft compared to when I when I um, 
when I needed it. It's quite un unreal how soft it's got. But this I wear all the time. I throw it on uh, summer evening, cool morning, just throw it on all the time. So I'm actually keen to do either another one or, yes, yeah, travel on this year. I think it was the silk. I do need to repair it. I, I pulled a stitch, so I have to repair it. But I've been avoiding it. But I do keep wearing it, so it is getting worse. So I do need to repair that. Um, yeah, I love this. Absolutely love this. I'll see if my Ravelry page has the information. But I adore the Travel Knitter lace weight and the linen combination. And I, I'm thinking there's uh, there's also another pattern called the Promenade Blouse, which has just been released. Or the floodlight tea and I'm actually thinking of doing this in the same combination and I think I'm just at a certain age where I get hot so um, that's why I think I like this so much just need a bit extra sometimes and uh, and absolutely adore this so this was the Elton cardigan and uh, yeah in travel knitter lace weight and I'll just check what what yarn that was and the, it was the Tanami lace. I'm pretty sure it's silk. Yeah, it's the Tanami lace. So, and the um, and the Kalinka, Kalinka linen from Wild and Woolly Shop in London. So beautiful. I love this. I really adore. I really adore this. And the last whip. Oh, I've gone twenty minutes. So. Okay, the last, sorry, the last FO that I'm going to show you, which is my absolute favourite, and I will wear it on a podcast as soon as it's, it's um, cold enough to do it. It's too hot today. Is my Porty Pullover. And I love this. This must be one of the favourite jumpers I have ever knit in my life. So it's, it's four-ply Shetland yarn. Uh, I did a wedge to get the colour combos that I liked and the pattern is by Gudrun Johnson and I wear it and wear it and wear it and wear it and wear it and, and it's still a rustic yarn, it's quite rustic, uh, rustic equals, it, I, I'm hesitant to say scratchy because it just means it's got body and structure. Merino is very soft and drapey, a little bit on the spectrum of, you know, when you get back to, when you get down to alpaca, you know, got no structure or um, strength about it, but it's got lots of drape and, and it's very, very soft, but consequently, you know, it sort of just flows over you, which for the right uh, garment, that's wonderful. But I also think that these sort of, this sort of uh, garment is very wearable, like really, really hard wearing. It, it can take all day, it can take grandkids, it can take gardens, it can take being out in the wind and the rain and all sorts of things. Um, but I, equally it can sit in a restaurant. So I, I just, and they tend to get softer with age. So they tend to uh, melt into each other, the stitches melt into each other a little bit more and you end up getting a really beautiful, like a woolen blanket um, fabric, which is just a big hug. So I didn't do any, um, I didn't do any, uh, ferrule at the bottom. I just picked out a couple of the colours and trimmed them in in that. And I just adore this this colourway. So I can find out which one it is. But it's got blues and browns. It's pretty much true to colour there. It's just beautiful. So yeah, my porty pullover by Gudrun Johnson in four ply, and it's a mix. It's a mix of Jamison and Jamison and Smith. Um, that's why I'm saying four ply Shetland. So, but I adore, I have bags of this yarn. Okay, let's not talk about my stash because my stash lives in two different continents, hence continental drift knits. And um, yeah, it's, it's a bit messy. 
but anyway we're not talking about that so whips i am out of garment whips at the minute um so i am accessory whipping and uh, the reason i'm doing that is partly because it's summer and so my i don't tend to want a big bulky item on my lap having said that i do have a whip which um i pick up every now and again uh, my grandmother um, knitted us as children a beautiful shawl baby shawl and uh, I knitted one for my daughter when my grandson was born and so I'm just doing another couple of ones to go into the glory box there are no babies due but um inspired by stephanie pearl mcphee but not not from a des designing perspective but just from giving gifting a beautiful um blanket so this is the feather knitted shawl um it's a very old patents shawl and it's all scrunched up at the moment but basically you knit the center in garter stitch and uh, then go into a feather and fan and then there's a, a knitted a knitted on border so i just pick this up every whenever i did some plain knitting on it the other day and um and enjoy that so i just cart it around with me it's, it's been going about a year on and off i did one center spilled a cup of tea on it and had to get rid of it i tried everything um, the other works in progress. So again, uh, gauge dye works. I'm doing a muscle borough hat and the muscle, this is the solar system. So the solar system is, uh, basically, uh, the distance between is the gray and the different colors of the different planets. I'm really enjoying that. So that's good train knitting. My yarn sits inside. And basically, I do the hat. So it's just a little big long tube with basically two crowns, and you insert one into the other to make the hat. So that's whip knitting. And the final whip knitting I've lost. Yep. Oh, actually, I'm not. No, I'm sitting on it. Okay. Well, I've got to do the second. I've got to do the second sock of this and essentially what I'm doing is another sock in a different size and I'm just re-knitting this yarn this on a 2.25 mil because that was the bulletproof 2 mil and it just wasn't big enough it just wasn't it wasn't really big enough so I'm re-knitting that one and enjoying that so this is really interesting because i'm re-knitting re straight from the old sock and we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, very wrinkly yarn and so i'm getting a very wrinkly sock but this one was the same and i have washed that one and basically most of it's come out so i was pretty happy with that so I'm knitting away on that. I, um, I'm knitting Magic Loop. Uh, normally a DPNs person. So uh, the transition to Chai Goos has made a big difference. And uh, basically I, I use Chai Goos for everything at the moment. Um, but I'd happily go back to, back to DPNs. Uh, I've been knitting for, I worked out the other day, about 45 years. So my grandmother taught me to knit. I used to knit on my school bus 40 years ago. Um, so there's a lot of knitting and, and that can be good and bad because I think uh, unfortunately when you've knitted that long, it, it's really hard to change how you do something. It's taken me about three years to change the way I do my slip slip knits just because I keep forgetting and I do do it the way my muscle memory knows to do it, my brain knows to do it. And similarly, I would love to teach myself continental knitting, but I don't have the patience because my speed just disappears. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, 
I really love the fact that I that I can knit fairly quickly and and enjoy my knitting and not have to look at times, but also do challenging things as well. Um, but I think, yeah, that, that there's just sometimes where you get restricted by what you think are your limitations and and. Uh, I see new knitters just do things and I go, mm, it would take me 20 years to do that. So so that's all I've got on the needles at the moment. It's, it's very, very li little for me, which is uh, normally I've got lots and lots. I do have lots of whips that are stacked away, but they're just, they'll just come out at some point when I get inspired. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I should start a segment, um, Abandoned Whips. Um, seg segment to see if I can get re-inspired with them so uh, that sort of finishes my finished objects and whips and uh, I'm just going to talk about a few things that I've bought um, I do crochet as well and I always have a couple of crochet blankets on the go uh, but they're for another time because we're already at 30 minutes so so that's fine we don't want this to be too long an episode to begin with uh, not till I build up some uh, some credibility with you. Uh, so what I'm going to do, okay, there's two there's two main groups of acquisitions uh, that you might like to see uh, that I'm really that I'm really loving at the moment and thinking about. Um, so the first one is uh, Holst. So I've never used Holst Super Soft. And Rebecca from Crow Bear um, alerted her people on Instagram to say there was a special. So I think they were £16 or something ridiculous. So I got three. And uh, they're a fingering weight or a really light fingering weight. Um, I think this is a 100% wool. Um, this is this one's called Prussian, and this is my probably more problematic one. It's blue, but it has a purple undertone, and I'm not sure about it. But I think actually it might be nice to step out of my comfort zone and and use it. Um, but what I thought I might do is hold it with a hold it with a more blue blue mohair to make it a little bit more blue blue and so the other day there was a sale in uh, wool warehouse and with their kid silk so I got a few just to try and I'm wondering whether that together might just create a bit of the blue the more blue blue that I want. The other option was pairing it with something a little bit more radical and actually creating a mild effect, but I don't think I'll do that. But it didn't it didn't look right. So so that's that's interesting. I'm having a think about that, seeing what 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 I could come up with. Um, I also got Oxford grey, which is really lovely, and that's almost a perfect pairing for that. So. That's just uh, Kid Silk, Drops Kid Silk Unicolor. I think it was £2.65. So really quite economic. And then this one was Apple Green, I think. Dark Apple. And I have these two. I'm not sure. That one's too light and that one's too dark. So I'm thinking of the dark one because I think I'd like it darker than lighter. So I'm thinking that. Hmm. Yep, I'm really inspired to try something with these, but it's early summer here, so I'm not really keen on huge amounts of wool knit, like big garment wool knitting. So we'll might just hold that one, hold that thought. The other day I went to the River Knits open day, and Becky and Marcus. Uh, own river knits in the UK and I had always wanted to go and uh, see their see their um, product oh, I'd seen their product at uh, Unravel I think in 2018 or 19 
and um, I'm not going to talk about my tea because I just have black builder's tea. So um, anyway, when I was, when I, at Unravel three, four years ago, pre-pandemic, first time they, they exhibited, um, I saw these. I just love these. I need to do anything do I I just love these I don't know what I'm gonna do with it I'm just gonna it's just a rainbow minis and I just adore it I think I might just use it to decorate no I won't really I'll use it but uh, yeah I love that so it's their neem base is it their yeah their neem base I believe 100% wool. So Neen is 100% uh, British blue faced Leicester wool spun and hand dyed in the UK. Stunning. So when I went, to, I was a bit naughty when I went to the open day. We had a lovely day. Thank you, Becky Marcus. We had a really lovely day. Oh, I had a lovely day. I went by myself. Um, but I've always wanted their Chimera base. And I've, I've had it before in one or two other um, skeins. But I thought to myself, I would, I've been always very, I've been very keen for a long time to try the shifty. Um, one of the shifties. I have the patterns. I have the jumper and the shawl pattern, I think. And I'm thinking maybe that's what I might cast on next, one of these. Um, but I'm not sure yet what combination. So this is what I've got. So I've got their, so this one is their water. And it's a little bit of a cheaper alternative to spin cycle. Um, it's not cheap, but it's, it's cheaper than spin, than I can get spin cycle here. Um, so that's the water. And then that's the matching neem in oh, Sommerlich er Nacht Himmel, Himmel. Sorry, I butchered that, Marcus. I apologise. Sommerlich, Sommerlich, Sommerlichen, S-O-M-M-E-R-L-I-C-H-E-N, Nacht, which is night, Himmel, H-I-M-M-E-L. It's beautiful so I'm thinking that would that would go really well together possibly the nice thing is I can do lots of different things even even if I choose to put this into another project I can use this on a different project and then I sort of channeled the same thing but in a lesser quantity with that and this one is pumpkin this chimera, oops, let's hold it that way. Chimera. Gorgeous. And this one is um, rost, 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 I think it's rost, rost. R O S T or rust, R U S T, not sure. Gorgeous, stunning, really stunning. So, and then I did get another Chimera. Uh, I got, um, this one's Lichen. So if you can imagine them all together. So the, the lichen matches in with the pumpkin, provides a contrast, but there's a there's light in the blue water um, yarn as well. So, yeah, I'm a bit inspired by this. I'm like, uh, oof, I don't know where to start, though. I've got to start swatching. I think I've got to start swatching. So, oh, I did get one more. So one more pumpkin. And then the other thing I did get while I was there was from Larissa at Travel Knitter. 
I got Hewan Orchard Super Sock. And once again, I just want to try some socks. I just want to do some, some interesting socks. I don't need highly patterned socks. I just would love to wear wool socks again. I'm very hard on my socks, so I don't know whether this is a forlorn dream. But, um, yeah. That's, um, I'm just trying to think whether there was anything else I wanted to show you in particular. <gasps> oh. Oh, I did get this at Tribe. So beautiful. It's Blue Sky Alpacas Brush Siri. It, now, if you want soft, oh my God, that's soft. It will do a hat. But I'm not sure what I'll use it for. I should just touch it for now. Mm, love it. Yeah, so that's the Colourway Earl Grey. Really lovely. And I have a, I have a whole bag of Holst and Bitches and Bushes and Chaos Yarn, different things, because I'm thinking about a spot sweater. But I'll, I'll show you that next time. Um, is there anything else I wanted to show you particularly? No, I've got lots. I've got lots in here. Oh, I will show you this Fab Funk. I've had this for ages. So this is another thing. I've got. I've got things in my stash that would do perfectly well for for um, socks. So I just need to get on with it. I need to, and and that's why I think I'm a bit reluctant to um, put on a whole garment at the moment because I actually want to just play with socks and see whether I can get a vanilla sock pattern for me that works every time. Once again, this is one I do in a tube. Um, I think there's only 50 grams here, but it's a fabulous rainbow, fab funky fibers. Um, I always put my labels in the middle uh, it's called the big one, self-striping, 75% merino, 25% nylon, four ply, sock fingering, superwash, hand dyed, 50 grams, 212 meters hand dyed in the UK. And that's fab funky fibers. I've had this a while. I've had this well over a year or two. Okay. So there's lots happening. And I've got a sort of a bucket tote here, which I use. And um, yeah, so that's all I want to show you today. I've got lots more, but let's not get, let's not go there. Um, but what I wanted to do was just let you know a little bit about me um, and where, sort of my background. So basically I've worked in, um, I'm more administrator in our own business for 20 years and uh, seven and a half years ago we came to the UK. I have three kids and their partners and kids, grandkids, and they're all back in Melbourne in Australia as are my parents uh, and my husband's parents and we're hoping we've been here for work. Uh, pandemic was rather unplanned and very difficult uh very very difficult being away from family so we're very fortunate we normally travel two or three times a year back to australia spend time with with family we spend up to six months of a year in australia and uh, so i thought maybe i could um just show you different places and yarny things in different countries and that might be a bit of fun so yeah so this afternoon, I'm going to the knit in, Worldwide Knit in Public Day over in Hackney uh, that's been put together by Anna from Wild and Woolly. And uh, I'll see if I get any um, vi vision of that. Editing Lisa may or may not be able to put it in, who knows. But essentially, I just want to talk about what I've been doing every couple of weeks. And I would love people to let me know uh, or if you've happened to watch this, I'd love to see or know what uh, Afterthought Heal you use and if you've been able to modify it. So 
I'm about to dive in. I believe uh, Stephanie Per McPhee has done a whole thing on Afterthought Heels recently on Patreon. Um, so I'm going to have a go at that. So, so I think uh, I'll finish it there with a couple of uh, recommendations. So the podcasts I've been watching are Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I've been watching the Rebecca at the Crea Bayer. I've been watching Mega at Skeins of Dreams and Selma at Little Big Knits, um, Inga at Knitting Traditions, and I'm sure I've forgotten somebody. There's more, but I'm loving a few of them at the moment. I'm experimenting with We Grow Wild and an Italian knitter and Kim and Jonna. Um, so there's a few different ones out there that I, I dip in and out of as well and have it. Oh, um, Laura from Penrose Knits, the Knitting Pickle. Um, enjoy that one. I feel like I'm missing one that I watch all the time. I'll let you know next time. All right. Thanks. Thanks for spending time. And to future Lisa, thanks for putting this together. Okay. Okay.